Then I went down the hill on Olive Street, past framed houses reeking with murder stories, and on down Olive to the Philharmonic Auditorium, and I remembered how I'd gone there with Helen to listen to the Don Cossack choral group. So I was down on Fifth and Olive where the big streetcars chewed your ears with a noise, and the smell of gasoline made the side of palm trees seem sad, and the black pavement still wet from the fog of the night before. So now I was in front of the Biltmore Hotel walking along the line of yellow cabs, with all the cab drivers asleep except the driver near the main door. I was passing the doorman and I hated him at once, with his yellow braids and six feet of height and all that dignity. And now a black automobile drove to the curb and a man got out. He looked rich and then a woman got out and she was beautiful. Her fur was silver fox and she was a song across the sidewalk. And I thought, Oh boy, for a little of that, just a day and a night of that. Then I stood in front of a pipe shop, and the whole world faded except for the window, and I stood and smoked them all and saw myself a great author, stepping out of a big black car, and she was there too, proud as hell of me, the lady in the silver fox. Los Angeles, give me some of you. Los Angeles, come to me the way I came to you, my feet over your streets. You pretty town, I loved you so much, you sad flower in the sand, you pretty town. This passage is from Ask the Dust by John Fante. If you've never read or even heard of John Fante, don't fret, you're far from alone. Today, Fante is considered at best a cult novelist, and at most a precursor to the far more celebrated beat writers like Kerouac and Ginsberg. Actually, Fanti is a neglected national treasure. Fanti was born in Denver, Colorado on April 8, 1909. His early years were defined by poverty, prejudice, and his parents' incompatible union, all of which became themes in his literary explorations of Los Angeles and the working class immigrant experience. In the early 1930s, Fanti began work on The Road to Los Angeles, the first of four novels featuring his alter ego, Arturo Bandini. He followed with Wait Until Spring Bandini in 1938 and his masterpiece, Ask the Dust in 1939. Both were published to great critical acclaim, yet neither of these books found a large readership and fell out of print within a short period of time. Between 1935 and 1940, three of his short stories actually reached the screen. Of the three, the only one that amounted to much was East of the River with John Garfield. Plagued with disappointment, Fanti turned to screenwriting as a side career. He wrote to his friend, the writer, William Soroyan, I am now a complete and ungarnished hack. In 1955, he was diagnosed with diabetes, and by the 1970s he had lost both legs and his eyesight to the disease. By then his books had long fallen out of print, and his inspiration was gone. Poet Charles Bukowski sent John Martin to his editor at Black Sparrow Press a copy of Acid Dust. Soon fancy stories and novels were all back in print. The fresh acclaim energized Fonte. In spite of his poor health and blindness, he embarked on writing what would be his last book, Dreams of Bunker Hill completed the Bandini Quartet. It was published in 1983, shortly before his death. In 2015, the Los Angeles Public Library dedicated a square across from the main branch, John Fanti Square.